Yes, guys, it's now time to have a look at Italy. I didn't have an Italy rugby shirt, so the AC Milan football top will have to do. But Italy have always traditionally been that team in the Six Nations who struggle, who tend to get the wooden spoon. Is it going to be different this year? Who should we be keeping an eye out on in this year's tournament? What are my predictions? Stay tuned and leave a like on the video. Subscribe. Let's get into it. So in the last Six Nations, Italy finished bottom of the table, which is a very familiar sight for Italian fans. And in the Rugby World Cup, they finished third in Pool B, which was expected behind South Africa and New Zealand. But they did beat Namibia and Canada, but obviously they didn't play uh, New Zealand due to the weather issues out in Japan, which that is the reason why Sergio Parise will be involved in one or two games. There's a changing at the helm of the guard. It is Conor O'Shea out and Franco Smith in the former fly half for South Africa. He played in South Africa, Italy and in Wales as well and has had time coaching uh, out in South Africa and has had success with the Cheetahs in the Pro 14. So he comes in. Is he going to change that much? Is there a lot to change? The squad has been announced. We'll go through in just a second. I felt like Conor O'Shea made some good changes at the start of his time in Italy. But unfortunately, it just wasn't quite enough. But what he did find was a solid number 10 in Tommaso Allen, who I think is going to be key for them. He is seriously a very good player. Uh, played under 20s rugby for Scotland, uh, but decided to play for Italy. He is a very good player. He's got a lot of uh, ability, controls the game well, kicks well, and he looks like a good player. The squad itself, as I said, has been announced. It's a mix of experience and youth. Players such as Zani and Tommaso Allen are still there. Zani at 35 years old, 117 odd caps. He's still there and uh, is still um, playing. Although last year and in the World Cup he came off the bench a lot, so you'd expect him really to have that kind of impact in the game where he comes off the bench later on in the match. We have to talk about Sergio Parise, of course. So last year um, in the World Cup, he was meant to have a final swan song, really. Uh, playing against New Zealand to say goodbye to the Italian fans. That game was cancelled due to the weather. He approached Franco uh, Smith and said, look, can I have a game to say goodbye to my fans in Rome? And uh, it was agreed. So that would either be against Scotland, you'd think, on match day three, or against England on match day five. Also in the squad, there are a lot of exciting youngsters to keep an eye out on. Um, lots from Treviso, so you've got Antonio Rizzi, you've got Callum Braley, and you've got Danilo Fischetti. All very exciting players to keep an eye on. The star player, of course, is Matteo Minotti. He can create something out of nothing. Playing for Wasps in the Gallagher Premiership, he is the thumbnail for this video. He is an electric player defensively. A bit questionable sometimes, but going forward in open play, teams won't be able to just afford to kick to him uh, in open play and give him space to run. They'll have to close him down, have to be quick defence on him, because he can create something out of nothing. We've already alluded about Tommaso Allen, about how he's improved and his ability to control a game, which is fantastic. So how does the fixture list look for the Italians? Well, they have a very tough fixture list to begin with. They travel to Wales to play against Wayne Pivak in his first game for Wales. I've already done a preview for Wales that's out on the channel now. Link in the description. Do go check it out. So they play them on the 1st of February, first weekend, first match of the whole tournament. I will be watching that, so really excited for that one. And then they travel to Paris the following week, and it's going to be interesting to see how France are doing. Obviously, they welcome England on match day one. Uh, again, preview France out on the channel now, link in the description. Do go check that one out. Who knows what we'll get with France, so that's not an easy game either. The big game for them is Scotland at home on match day three. It's a massive game for them. They've got to try and... Uh, and, and yeah, get a win here, really. I think one win for Italy, the Six Nations, would be a positive step in the right direction. I, I think they would certainly take that. I can't see them getting another win anywhere, um, especially with the fixture list the way it is. It's really harsh on them this year. So Scotland third on the 22nd of February. Then they travel away to Ireland um, on the 7th of March, which is a really tough game. Andy Fowle, of course, at the helm there, uh, so he will be in control there. And then, of course, they then have England on the final uh, match day on the 14th of March, and they have them at home. So England at home and Scotland at home. They would be targeting that Scotland game, and rightly so. Uh, Scotland seemed to be in a bit of a weird state at, at, at the minute, um, 
So yeah, keep an eye out on how they're going. Uh, but yeah, Italy is going to be a tough one for them. Obviously, every team is starting to think about that four-year cycle now. You've seen that with France uh, in my preview. I talk about all the new young players that they've brought in. They're thinking about that. And you feel like Italy need to think about that as well. But Franco Smith is only there on an interim coach role. So he's not even guaranteed a long time. He's been given this Six Nations and who knows what happens after that. So it's going to be interesting to see what his uh, mentality is on it. Is he going to go and play youth? Or is he going to say, right, I need to get results. Because if I want this job permanently, I need results. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. How are Italy going to do? Who uh, do you think they can get a win against? What players should we be looking out for? And I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon. Peace.